Here we want to explain the central limit theorem. I've got a population going between numbers between 1 and 1000 randomly, and I've got 990 numbers in that population. I've calculated the mean of that population, and I've got the number 516. I've also placed bins for all of the different brackets of numbers that I want to measure, and I've counted the frequency of the number of times numbers have cropped up in those different bins. Using the frequency function to output all of these different values, I've now got the basis of a frequency distribution table, and I can chart that frequency distribution table in a frequency distribution chart or histogram. I'll select those numbers, and insert just a normal column chart. So we can see the frequency distribution here, and we can assess from these different values here is that this is frequency distribution that's approaching normal. We've got a rectangular-like shape. If we put that chart to one side for a moment, and let's focus on what the central limit theorem says. The central limit theorem states that if you have a population with a mean and standard deviation, and take sufficiently large random samples from the population, then the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normally distributed. Let's put that to the test with this spreadsheet. I'm going to take a number of different samples from the population. I'll do that by the following formula. And to future proof this formula, I'm going to absolute this array reference here. That will allow me to drag the formula downwards and across, and it will still reference the same population. So let's go ahead and apply that formula. We're getting one of the random numbers, or a randomly selected number from the population, and I can drag that formula across by a number of times, and I can also drag the formula downwards. So I've got four numbers in each sample. That means n is equal to four, and I've taken 10 different samples. I'd like now to get the mean of all of the different samples. So I'll go ahead and put in that formula. I'm going to apply that formula and copy that formula down for all 10 samples. You'll notice that every time that I recalculate the spreadsheet, the samples are changing, but that's okay. For the sample size equal to four, I now want to get a mean comparison. So I want to take the mean of all of these different means here. And let's see how that compares with the mean of the overall population. So we're getting this number here, it's close to the mean of the population. And every time I recalculate the spreadsheet, we'll see different numbers either side of that mean population. Sometimes they're closer than others, but we're getting a feeling of an overall pattern of how close the different means are with a sample size of four to the original mean of the population. I want to expand that experiment this time, I just want to increase the number of samples that I take. So I want to first of all increase to a sample size of 10, and then I want to increase to a sample size of 30. To do that, I'll need to take a number of different samples here. I'm just going to squeeze these together a little bit more to give me more space. And I can just drag this formula across for 10 and then to 30 different samples. And that's my 30 different samples for sample one. And let's just copy that down for all 10 different samples. So I've got 10 different samples with an N of 30 in each. And I can select from that different numbers of samples. Let me just grow my spreadsheet again. I'm just going to scroll back here. And let's go ahead and insert a similar formula here to get the mean of all samples with an N of equal to 10. So that is from column M to V for 10 samples. And so I've got my different sampling means there. One column for n equal to 4, another column for n equal to 10, and another column for n equal to 30. So let's go ahead and get the mean of the sample means. So average that column for n equal to 10, and average this column for n equal to 30. So here we have it. We've got different mean comparisons. This is the mean of the original population, the full set of numbers. And we've got the different means for different sampling rates. What I should see every time that the Excel spreadsheet is recalculated, meaning that we're getting a variety of different samplings. 
we should see that overall, generally, the higher the sample rate, the closer our mean should be on average to the general population mean. And of course, sometimes the lower sampling rate can be lucky, but generally, that's what we'd expect. Let's remind ourselves of what the central limit theorem states. So the central limit theorem states that if you have a population with a mean and a standard deviation, and takes sufficiently large random samples from the population, then the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normal. To check to see if it's normal or approaching normal, we need to chart these different distributions. In the same way as I charted the original frequency distribution of the population, I also want to do the same type of process with the different sampling means. Using the same type of formula, using the frequency function, drag this formula across, and then just change the actual reference to the mean of samples, and then copy across. So now I've got the sampling distribution, I've got a frequency distribution table for each of the different versions of the sampling, whether the n was equal to 4, n was equal to 10, or n was, was equal to 30. I now want to chart those different sampling distributions, and let's see what type of distribution shape they make. And again, I'm just going to put in, this time, a line chart rather than a column chart. Let's make this chart a little bit bigger, and let's see how they compare. So, the low sampling rate here is 4, n equal to 4, the middle is n equal to 10, and the highest is n equal to 30 in grey. And we can see what we would expect on what the central limit theorem proposes, is that the higher the sampling rate, the more the mean of the samples will approach a normal distribution. So as you can see here, from n equal to 4, where we've got something that's approaching maybe a bimodal distribution. It's moving closer to something that's looking like a normal distribution in the orange line. And then when we go to n equal to 30, we see quite a normal distribution. It is just one peak in the middle. And we could imagine that coming into something that might represent a bell curve. The other aspect to notice is on those different curves. As the sampling rate gets higher, is that our standard deviation gets smaller and smaller. That means the spread of the data gets narrower and narrower, and the footprint of each curve gets narrower at the bottom. The question then remains after the central limit theorem is, how much is an appropriate sample rate? What should n be? And that really depends on the original population, and how normal the distribution is in the original population. If we've got a population that's reasonably normal, a sample size of 25 to 30 will suffice. We can even get a slight skewing to the positive or negative side for that normal distribution, and a sample size of 25 to 30 will still be sufficient. However, the less normal the distribution is of the original population, the more of a sample rate that we'll need to use. And that's the central limit theorem.